This is uh, Animal Paradise. We are here today at um, Paidupai's Pai farm, by Pai Joseph Idupai. He has a lot of goats in this place. We came today to check them and also to administer vaccine to some of them and then also to um, generally just look at them and see the ones that is needing one or two things and then um, give them treatment and um, ensure that um, they all uh, are doing well. I've seen it. But before we go to that vaccine's point, there are some things I want to say. First of all, this is November in Nigeria. This is November. November is um, dry season. Dry season means a time for stocking. If you are having a farm, a goat farm, this November is the time you're supposed to buy animals. You don't buy animals, you don't buy goats in the rainy season because of PPRO. PPRO is very powerful or it is a, it's very powerful in the rainy season. So if you buy stock in rainy season, a PPRO can attack them and to rescue them will be very difficult. So it's easier in the dry season where everywhere is dry. The viruses are not multiplying. The viruses are even dying. So dry season is the time to stock your farm. If you have a farm, as many stock as you want to buy, you buy in dry season. If it is the first time you are taking care of goats, don't buy many animals once. If you're having a farm newly, um, there are so many things you've not understood about your farm. Uh, every farm has its own uniqueness. First of all, you have to understand your workers. You have to understand the terrain where you're farming. You have to understand the feeding pattern. If you get 50 goats once, and when the dry season and your grass is run out, you may not be able to feed those animals. So it is better you get um, animals gradually you may be like 10 15 10 15 small small depends on how big your farm is and so that you'll be able to understand how they go and understand how your farm and your animals are relating how your farm your animals and your workers are relating how your farm your animals your workers and your finances are relating sometimes you may buy animals and then then you spend a lot of money to buy animals later you have to spend uh, more money to buy uh, antibiotics to treat those animals. Are you seeing it? Sometimes people may run out of, of cash when it comes to buying motiv um, antibiotics to treat those animals. So that's why you stock your animals gradually. You don't just pump in money like that. And moreover, anything you are starting for the first time, you do it small, small. That is for stocking. This is the season to stock. Now, another question I want to attend to, some people will say, um, when is the best time, and uh, what is the best breed? to go into what is the best breed which breed should i buy which breed should i um stock are you seeing it so um the breed you will stock depends on your location depends greatly on your location we that are in um southern nigeria or um, the southern nigeria generally um the nigerian dwarf is a very expensive breed in our south it's very expensive the Nigerian savannah, which is the Sokoto red, is not so expensive in our south. But if you go to the western Nigeria, which is just from few states away from us, the Nigerian dwarf is not so expensive. But the Nigerian savannah, which is the Alsa goat, is so expensive, especially a male of it. In our place here in the south, a male Nigerian dwarf or a male goat, you can get it for 15,000 naira. You can get it for 20,000 naira, a male goat. But in the West, the Yoruba region, male goats are more expensive. They can give you a male goat for 50,000, 60,000, while they give you a female goat cheaper. Have you seen it? So the breed you will go into is the breed that is lucrative in your location. If you see in your area, in your state, neighboring state, what breed they, that is in high demand, that is the breed you are supposed to invest in more. So that at the output time, when it is after you have spent three, four years or one, two, three years, irrespective of how many years you want to spend to raise your animals, after spending all those years, spending money, buying feed, buying medication, buying everything, after doing that, when it's not time to sell, you can sell one animal from 50,000 naira and above. But hardly before you get 50,000 naira animal of the Nigerian um, savannah, the house are gold in our state here. You get 30, 35, 40. But if you hold a very mature Nigerian dwarf, you get 40, 45, 50, 60. 
I see it. So that is for us in the south. But where you are, you will determine the breed that is in high demand. Some people want to go into foreign breed. If you are a first time um, um, animal rearer or a first time um, goat rearer, don't go for foreign breed, those exotic breeds, those boa goats and uh, Kalahari, Savannah. Don't go for them if you are is your first time. First gather goat experience with the local goats. All those local goats, gather the experience first because you will need the experience to take care of them. Are you seeing it? So once you gather the experience for two, three years with the local goats, then you can begin to bring in the foreign goats that you want to bring in. Permit me to say, goats used to die. There is mortality in goats. Don't just think that the way they were rearing goats in the villages that time, that's how goats is. Those goats in the villages, they get their natural uh, antibiotics by eating different things in different places. The moment you cage them down in one place, you have limited their food. You have limited their exercising. You've limited many things concerning them. They will begin to have issues if you don't know how to deal with them, um, um, if you don't know how to treat them. Are you seeing it? So, gather the experience first before you can say, hey, I want to go into exotic breed because one exotic breed can cost above 500,000 Naira and then you go and get maybe like 100 pieces, some millions of Naira, and then they begin to die. It's not going to be easy. I've seen it. So, gather the experience from local goats first before you move into the exotic breed. I think this one is getting uncomfortable now. Let me let him go so he can have his own time. So, that's that for um, um, the questions of what breed should I um, go into. Go into the breed that is in high demand where you are. All goats have strong resistance. All goats have strong resistance. Some people will tell you that the Hausa goat do well in the northern region. When you bring them to the southern region, they will begin to die. No, it is not true. That's the essence of the quarantine. When you get a goat from the northern region, which is a dry region, and bring it down to the wet region, which is the south region, you must take it through a process of quarantine. A process of quarantine is when you introduce antibiotics to the goat. As you bring them in, you introduce some antibiotics to the goat. Those antibiotics will help to re re regulate and re-regulate and reprogram the system of the goat. Take for instance, when you bring a goat, you use tylosine, sulfonol, dexanol, berenil, avamectin. Sulfonol will help to, if, if you bring a goat from the south, uh, from the north to the south, when he eats southern food, he may be having diarrhea. Sulfonol will help to regulate that. So the process of time that this goat is passing through um, those quarantine, you are feeding it with the, the feed you brought with it from the north. You are also missing it gradually with the feed in the south. The system is getting used to it. Are you seeing it? So the quarantine will reprogram the goat system to understand the atmospheric condition, the temperature, how hot we are. The antibiotics will be there to help the system. Um, the feed and the water. There are even some human beings who are in um, maybe southern Nigeria. If they go to like um, Lagos, Port Harcourt, um, all those areas, and you drink their normal water, it will affect your system. Are you seeing it? So also these animals, human beings are animals. These animals are almost the same. When you bring them in, you must help to boost, help to boost their immune system, help to boost their respiratory system, help to boost all their organs to adapt to the new um, location where you brought them. Are you seeing it? That's why quarantine is very important. And then after quarantining them for five days, uh, like what we do, um, we quarantine them for five days, let them rest on the sixth day. On the seventh day, you must vaccinate them. Today, we're going to do some vaccination of, of animals here. We have a cooler here. There's a cooler here that I want to use for um, vaccination. If you don't vaccinate your goat, there are 99.9% .9 possibilities that the goat will die. PPRO is widely spread in the whole of Nigeria now. I think there's even a campaign against it now. They are trying to eradicate PPRO before the year 2030. Uh, but I pray it, it will be possible. It will help us. Any goats you buy, you must quarantine them for five days and vaccinate them fast, fast. If you delay too much, PPRO is technical. It will not delay. So when you get your goat, don't just say that they are doing fine. They don't need anything. PPRO will be developing inside them for six days. After six days, it will be very strong, and to fight it will be difficult. So the moment you bring your animals to your farm, start the quarantine. Start introducing antibiotics to them. 
whether they are sick or they are not sick, introduce antibiotics to them to regulate and re-regulate their system, detraumatize them, and prepare them to get adapted to the to the new new location. So you introduce those antibodies on six day, vaccinate them. Vaccination is very important. Anywhere you are, you need vaccine. Call my number. We will be able to connect you to somebody who will give you vaccine in the state where you are. You're in Lagos, Abuja, Ekiti State, Ilori, Ilori is Kwara State, Ibadan, Ondo State, anywhere in Nigeria, in the Imo State, Enugu, anywhere you are inside Nigeria, you need vaccine, PPRO vaccine. Call the numbers, call my number. We will send you a number of a vaccine location close to you or someone close to you who can send the vaccine to you. All you need is to pay for the vaccine and pay for the um the processes that follows. There's a process that follows. Vaccine is a drug. It doesn't go like that. It must be in a nice block environment. Uh, we call it cold chain. It's in the fridge. You bring it up from fridge, put the cooler. From cooler, you must be putting ice block tea when it gets to where it's going to. So you need vaccine, call the number. We'll give you somebody who will supply you vaccine or give you vaccine close to you. Today, we are vaccinating. If you have not vaccinated your animals, I'm using this as a medium to call you, to call upon you. Make sure you vaccinate your animals so that we can join hands together and fight PPRO and defeat PPRO. Whether your goats are doing fine or they are not doing fine, you must vaccinate them. This is animal paradise. Today, we are going to miss this vaccine, but I will want to cut this video now so that I can make another video for the vaccine. Wait, hold on, sir. Yes, I will call this video and, and make another one. So, this is Animal Paradise. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel called Animal Paradise. Subscribe to it. Go to Facebook, Animal Paradise page on Facebook. Like the page. Like the page so that whatsoever we are up uploading, you will be receiving notification. We also have Animal Farmers Association. It's a group on, on, on Facebook. Go to that group. Join the group if you like. Then you can also send us a message to add you to our whatsapp group we have a whatsapp group interactive educative we call it the billionaires goat farmers club there we have a lot of goat farmers major goat farmers major goat goat farmer player players in nigeria they are all there you want to join send us a message we'll add it to the group thank you very much thank you for watching our, our channel bye bye